car that was built primarily to stay ahead of the world's fastest motorcycle riders. It is of course the BMW M4 GDS, the German brand's most focused, hardcore road racer and a machine that was born from its role as the MotoGP pace car. So it naturally begs the question, without its stickers and sirens and lights, is it as legitimately fast as a motorbike? So we've put the two of them here together at Sydney Motorsport Park to answer that question. Bike versus car, it's game on. But I'm also humble enough to admit that I can't extract the best out of this awesome machine. So we've also brought a dentist along. Well, he's actually a motorcycle rider. Say hi, Rob. The M4 GDS is BMW's take on a road legal race car, amplifying almost every mechanical element on the car in the name of added performance. But the first impression from behind the wheel is this car is a completely different animal. Gone is all that techno overkill and luxury of the standard M4, and in its place is purity. The simple, all you need to get going, race car for the road philosophy. The tactile elements are beautiful, the Alcantara steering wheel, the Alcantara over here, the race buckets that uh, are manually adjustable and I've got plenty of support, although you do sit on these big, lumpy race seat belts. And of course, there is no back seat. There's that big orange roll cage and a fire extinguisher in there. So if you did think you were Peter Brock in your old M3, then you could literally take this thing to the racetrack and not have a problem in it. And it is fast, I'll tell you, it's really fast. <laughs> At $294,715 plus on-road costs, it's pretty hard to see the value in this M4 GDS against the car that it's based on, which is half the money. But dig deep into the spec sheet and you'll understand. For starters, it features lightweight carbon fibre body panels, it has race-style adjustable coilover suspension, it has larger forged alloy wheels and carbon ceramic brakes. The 3-litre twin-turbo six-cylinder also features the production car first application of a water injection system. And what that does is fires a really fine mist into the top of the end of the cylinder at really high revs that basically allows it to burn more fuel and therefore bigger bangs and therefore more power. This car, this doesn't run out of puff all the way up there at 7,500 RPM. The end result is the M4 GDS has 51 kilowatts and 50 newton meters more than the standard M4, raising peak outputs to 368 kilowatts and 600 newton meters, which helps lower its ability to sprint from 0 to 100 k's to just 3.8 seconds, while retaining a respectable claimed average fuel consumption figure of 8.5 liters per 100 k's. You can drive this car both through the steering wheel and, and through the throttle. Lock. It's quite easy to adjust and really quick and linear, and it talks to you in such a nice community way. And that exhaust, it's got a beautiful titanium race exhaust on it that it sounds really raspy where the standard car is digital and it's plumbed in through the audio system. This thing is just six cylinders of fire breathing power coming out of the back of it. It gargles, it snorts, it rips at car axles. It's great, it sounds awesome. It sounds quite, it almost sounds like it's broken in some revs, but it's uh, such a great sound. It does that pretty damn easily. I don't like the standard M4, I think it's it's too digital, it's binary, it, everything comes on with this really fast rate, like the turbochargers or the damping and the steering's just all a little bit dirty. This thing, it is a completely different car, it's fantastic. It's fast, it's fast, but the whole, here comes that bike, I simply can't keep that bike out of my rear view mirror. BMW also builds one of the fastest motorbikes on the planet, the s 1000 rr Costing just under $30,000, it offers equally mind-bending performance, but for a fraction of the price. Unlike the car, which eschews as much electronic intervention as possible to make it more engaging, the bike embraces computing power, with a myriad of adjustable riding functions, from the suspension to traction control and ABS settings. It even has wheelie control and a pit lane speed limiter. 
Nestled behind its fairing, the 999cc inline four-cylinder produces a generous 146 kilowatts of power at a dizzying 13,000 rpm. Yet it has just 113 newton meters of torque. From around 10,500 rpm. Still, considering the S1000RR only weighs 208 kilograms, it can rocket to triple figures in a whisker over three seconds and still in first gear. More amazing than that though, it can reach double that speed in less than seven seconds, making it faster than million dollar supercars like the Ferrari LaFerrari and McLaren P1. Those electronics are performing an invisible magic show underneath that bike keeping it all on the deck and moving forward as fast as it possibly can. It's staggering how it all works seamlessly. Now I wouldn't say you couldn't crash it, but you'd have to be doing something stupid to throw it down the road. Just look at it, it's simply staggering how far you can lean that thing through the corners. It's not comfortable though, that riding position is pretty cramped and really one dimensional. It does feel like you're meant to be on a racetrack all the time. So which is it? Is the bike or the car faster around this circuit? Well, as I look out the window with one wheel flying past me at 200 kilometres an hour, I think I know the answer already. As fast as the M4 GDS is, and it is a very, very quick piece of machinery, the S1000RR, at least in the hands of our dentist, 